us. Okay, so my name is Marietta Bozovic, and I'm uh, a new assistant professor in Russian studies. Uh, the department will actually be Russian and Eurasian studies soon. Uh, the course that I use this technology for is Russian 101A, um, so beginning Russian language class. So basically the project was replacing what would have been an oral final exam or an oral final project presentation of some sort. What I would classically do in a beginning Russian language class um, after about a semester's time, actually after each semester, would be to have the students prepare either skits or some sort of dialogue. It's a continuation of an uh, exercise they do in class all the time. But preparing a mini dialogue of their own, either memorizing it or working on it several times, correcting pronunciation, and then presenting it in some final form so that it feels like a capstone closure experience to the oral component of the class. And here, instead of having the students practice that and then present that in a group or in pairs in front of the, the classroom, I had them do this dubbing project on their own. Uh, the students, uh, I would say, they loved it. I think they, they like anything that is innovative uh, or that seems innovative and a little bit different from what we were doing in the classroom. It also ended up working very well because um, it, it felt as if the dialogue exercises they did in class were building towards something that was a little fancier. Um, so it had that, that capstone feel to it. So what I did is I pulled segments from Russian animations uh, little-known cartoons, so not something, not the equivalent of Tom and Jerry, but more artistic, unusual uh, animations. I picked four things, four clips that had a very different look and feel to them, but all that had something that, that to my mind was recognizably culturally Russian, even without the sound and the music. And I thought that would be also interesting for them to think about, uh, or would be maybe inspiring for them to see something a little culturally different. Um, so what I had them do is then look at these clips uh, stripped of sound and music and do the same exercise they'd been doing in class, that is compose little dialogues with what vocab they know, what grammar they know. Um, and then they had to find a way to make this limited dialogue and vocabulary fit with fairly sophisticated animations. Um, and the, the other thing that was good, and I, I spoke to them quite a bit after we finished this project, after we screened it, to see what worked and what didn't work, and to see what would work well for next semester. I think a longer version of this project would work very well uh, for second semester beginning language. Um, I think they'd be able to do slightly more ambitious things, and they would have more, more language at their, at their disposal to work with, so it might work even better. Тут не интересно. Я тут уже 10 лет. Но мы тебя любим. Как мы тебя можем помочь? Мне тут очень не нравится. Я хочу пойти в парк, в бассейн, в город и Как я люблю идти на улицу. Ха-ха-ха-ха. Какой ужас. Она такая некрасивая, плохая и старая. Um, I would definitely like to do a longer, more complicated version of this for second semester. I think the dubbing project worked well enough um, and was not too distracting for them. So I think that that's a great capstone and I think works better than a final oral exam. <laughs> Okay, and um, uh, in terms of grading, this is something that sort of worked, but I would also change um, going into second semester. I think I would give them now a formal rubric beforehand so they know exactly what it is that I'm looking for. Since everything was a little bit experimental, a little bit rushed, they had just enough time to do this project and just enough time to present it and just enough time to, to put everything together at the end of the semester without cutting into their preparation for the final exam time. Um, so there wasn't that much of an opportunity to go into certain formal rubrics beforehand. 
I did not grade them on the technology or the fun things they added like sound effects or cool voice modulation effects at all. Um, that was just a lovely thing they did for presentation. If it looked good and actually all four projects looked really good, I probably just was a little bit more generous with my grammar grade and again the project was new many of them had never worked with Final Cut Pro before and so I gave them a little bit benefit of the doubt a little extra nudge um, The project was not very stressful or time consuming for me. Um, first of all, I had this idea, or rather, I stole this idea in consultation with, with you. Um, uh, so I felt that I was taking an idea that the digital me uh, media services um, had already, were already familiar with, had already worked with, so I had sort of perfect support. Um, I'd done a little bit of work with Final Cut Pro before, but um, it was just incredibly useful to sit down and go over the two of us what I was going to request the students to do. Basically, I do think that it's very important and it's more fair that anything, any project I ask the students to do, I be able to do myself. So if I couldn't figure out how to do the voice recording and set up the sound effects in Final Cut Pro, I wasn't going to ask them to do that. So having the mini workshop, um, working through it myself, finding that, in fact, it actually was fairly simple once one got the hang of it, figuring out how to do the voice recording, the stop-start, where to find sound effects, put something together. So that was great. Um, I felt at all times, actually, that I had support um, so that I could contact someone if something went wrong. Um, what we did is we organized one extra class, and it worked well because I'd missed one class, I'd canceled one class for a conference that I was attending, and so I felt that I had this extra leeway with the students. Oh, you have this one free day? Well, I'm going to ask you to come in for an extra class, a uh, digital media workshop. We're going to learn a little bit about Final Cut Pro. A couple of the students had worked with Final Cut Pro before. I think one fairly extensively in high school, one a little bit. One or two had played around with iMovie. So um, it wasn't terribly intimidating for them. And there was, I think, at least one person in every group who felt who was a little more uh, digitally savvy. So that worked out well. And I, I signed the groups, um, so I kind of thought about that. Um, I was absolutely doing social engineering as I put people together. Um, <sighs> da, Papa! Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm. Say, Chas, so the classroom presentation went really well, the, the workshop. Um, afterwards, I checked in with the students to see if they had any questions. They said, no, no, all clear. Um, and then there was a silence from them, and that actually made me nervous. I wasn't sure if they were doing anything. Uh, if they were panicking about this, I would check in with individual students, and they'd say, no, no, everything's fine. Um, still no word, still no word. Um, I had them go over the language um, itself, the, the presentations, I mean the dialogues, with me and with our Fulbright language assistant. So I knew they had that material and then in terms of what they were recording I just decided to trust them that they'd be done when they said they'd be done. And they all were. And all of them turned out really well, I thought. In terms of individual work versus group work, I constantly assign work group, partner work, dialogues, mini skits um, in, in class. For a language class, this is incredibly important. And yes, there's always going to be a bit of a division of labor, even minus any of the technology. Simplest, simplest task of writing a dialogue, two students working together, the stronger student is going to do uh, much of the heavy lifting. Um, so that's unavoidable, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. I think, again, in a language class, part of what we're working with is creating a kind of comfortable environment where the students can help each other and learn from each other. There are always going to be differences in terms of how people learn a language, how fast, what their particular skill set is. And I need the students not to be competing with each other, but working together.